All right, let's talk about the brand new Arduino Uno Q. And look, this is not just another board they're adding to the family. No way. This thing is a huge leap forward. It's basically a microcontroller and a microcomputer smashed together into one package. So what does that actually mean for us? Well, to really get your head around the Uno Q, you kind of have to ask yourself this question because that's literally what it is. It takes that real-time hands-on control that we all love from a classic Arduino and just mashes it together with the brain power of a small computer. And this right here, this shows you everything you need to know at a glance. On the left, you've got your good old classic Arduino. One chip, a microcontroller unit, or MCU. And you program it with a C++ sketch. Simple, reliable, we know how it works. But then you look to the right, and the Uno Q has a microprocessor unit, an MPU, and an MCU. This dual-brain setup means we're graduating from simple sketches to full-on apps that use both Python and C++. Yep, it's a whole new ballgame. So, this whole two-brains, one-board idea, how does that actually work under the hood? Let's peel back the layers and look at the hardware that makes this whole revolution tick. So check this out. This is where it gets really interesting because it shows you how they've split up the work. You've got the MPU. That's a pretty beefy Qualcomm chip. And get this, it runs a full Debian Linux operating system. That's your heavy lifter. It's going to handle all your complex apps, run your Python code, maybe even deal with some graphics. But then you have the MCU. That's a speedy ST microelectronics chip. And its job is totally different. It runs a real-time OS called Zephyr, and its whole world is about handling those super precise, time-sensitive things, you know, like instantly reading a sensor or flipping a pin. Probably the easiest way to think about it is like this. You've got a thinking brain and a reflex brain. The MPU is that thinking brain. It's running Linux, it's chewing on complex logic, it's making the big decisions. And the MCU, that's the reflex brain. It's just lightning fast, reacting to the physical world with zero delay. And when you put them together, you get a system that's incredibly powerful, but also super responsive at the same time. Physically, the board's gonna feel pretty familiar. It's got the exact same footprint as the older Unos, so all your shields and cases should still work, which is great. But the upgrades here are huge. We're talking 3.3 volt logic, but it's five volt tolerance, so your old stuff won't fry. And the connectivity is on another level. You've got Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.1 built right in. And that USB-C port? It's not just for power. It handles data, video, and audio. Plus, there's a quick connector to make adding I2C devices a total breeze. Okay, so the hardware is obviously a massive upgrade. But honestly, the biggest change, especially for anyone who's been in the Arduino world for a while, is on the software side. We really need to talk about this jump from writing sketches to building apps. This right here is pretty much the new slogan for the Uno Q. It's a really direct way of saying that the whole programming model has changed. You're not just writing one simple piece of code that loops forever anymore. Nope. You're actually developing a more complex, multi-part application. So what does one of these apps even look like? Well, it all goes back to those two brains we were talking about. The MPU, our thinking brain, that's where you run your high-level logic using Python. Then the MCU, our reflex brain, that handles all the real-time stuff with C++. And the secret sauce that holds it all together is a software feature called the bridge. It's what lets the two processors talk to each other like they're one. Now to make building these apps way easier, Arduino came up with this really cool idea called bricks. Just think of them as Legos for your code. They're pre-built, reusable chunks of code that handle really complex stuff. So let's say you need to pull data from a weather API. Instead of writing all that code yourself, you just grab the weather brick, snap it into your Python script, and boom, it just works. It's gonna speed up development like crazy. This whole hybrid design doesn't just change the way you code, it completely changes the way you can actually use the board. This flexibility opens up three totally different modes for how you can connect to it and run your projects. First up, we've got PC mode. This is the one we all know and love, right? The classic setup. You just plug the Uno Q into your computer with one USB-C cable. That cable gives it power and lets you program it from the new App Lab software. Super simple, super familiar. All right, now for something completely different, and this is wild, SBC mode. That stands for single board computer. You grab a USB-C hub, and it's gotta be one that supports power delivery, and you can plug a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse directly into the Uno Q. 
Suddenly, the board is the computer. It's running a full Debian Linux desktop. You can code, compile, and run your apps right there on the device. No other PC in sight. And last but not least, we have network mode. This is all about freedom. Once you set up the Wi-Fi, you can power the board from any old USB-C charger, stick it wherever your project needs to be, and then connect to it completely wirelessly from your computer. This means you can program it, debug it, and control it remotely. It's a total game changer for deployed projects. So let's just boil this all down to the three big things you need to remember. First, this revolutionary hybrid architecture. You've got a powerful MPU for the heavy lifting and a real-time MCU for that instant control all on one board. Second, this creates a totally new app paradigm. You're combining the power of Python with the speed of C++ to build projects that are way more complex than before. And third, all of this gives you incredible versatility. It can be a regular Arduino, a tiny little PC, or a network device you can control from anywhere. And that really brings us to the big question, doesn't it? The Unicoo Q is obviously an amazing new tool for all of us makers, but it might be something more. It could be the blueprint for a whole new generation of smart devices. When you combine high-level intelligence with real-time physical control on one single accessible platform, well, it really makes you wonder, is this powerful hybrid the new standard for how we're going to build the future?